Hello everyone, I'm Andrew the New Guy, and today I'm here to talk to you about 5 video game tricks unlocked by real world actions. And up first, at number 5, we have Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. When you go to the Temple of the Ocean King for the third time, you get to a big red door, you draw the hourglass, you get in, but you come across a sea chart, and the game prompts you to press the sacred crest against the sea chart to transfer it. But it doesn't tell you how to do that. It doesn't say press A to transfer, or, you know, press Y, or jump upside down, or do a backflip, or it doesn't tell you how to do any of that. You just, you're left to your own devices, and you're left to figure it out on your own. And it turns out it's something very easy you just take the ds you close it you got one thing on one screen you got the other thing you need on the other screen you close it and that's how you press the sacred crest and the c chart together you open it back up it makes a zelda sound boom you're done such a cool little trick i mean they don't tell you in the game how to do it i just got mad and closed my ds and threw it to the side and went back to it later and then boom i did it i i didn't even realize it at first but i guess nintendo knew that everyone was gonna get sick of trying to figure it out and just close the ds and then they would have to do it eventually so i guess it makes sense why they wouldn't tell you how to do it because you were going to figure it out anyway all on your own then up next number four we have uncharted golden abyss in chapter 13 upon returning to jace's grandfather's secret library she's ranting and raving to drake about whatever the hell she's talking about but drake has one of his famous moments of like realization and he connects a spanish grave marker symbol on a piece of paper he's holding to a symbol on the book that chase is waving in his face and after a quick nathan drake history lesson you're asked to translate the text on the paper but it's a blank piece of paper there's no text on there there's nothing Nothing there at all. So the way to get the text to show is by holding the paper up to a light source and that's what gets the invisible ink to kind of pop into view. You don't have that piece of paper. You only have your Vita. So you actually have to take your Vita and you hold it up to a light source and the ink starts to slowly pop into view. I guess it uses the camera on the back of the system itself to kind of read the light source. This was one of the gimmicky things that the Vita had like when the game first launched. Like we had this game, we had Tearaway, we had Gravity Rush that all took advantage of these little gimmicks things on the Vita, and a lot of them were really fun, in my opinion. Uncharted Golden Abyss is also a very fun and underrated Uncharted game, and it's definitely one you should pick up. Also, you should just be picking up a Vita because that machine needs all the help that it can get. And up next, number three, we have Pokemon X and Y. Throughout all of the Pokemon games, there've been a ton of different ways to evolve your Pokemon, whether it be just, you know, straight up hitting the right level, using rare candy, having a high friendship, having the Pokemon know a certain move, or even training it in a certain area. There are tons of ways, but in Pokemon X and Y, the only way to evolve Inke into Malmar is to take your DS while it's leveling up and just turn it upside down. So take your 3DS, turn it upside down while Inke is evolving, Bam, you got a new Pokemon, Malamar pops up, he evolves. This is such a cool little trick because I remember hearing about this from an actual person. Not the internet, not a strategy guide, but word of mouth from a person. Which reminds me of when I was a kid playing Pokemon Red and Blue, like on the playground, hearing about stuff like this from other players. Hearing that I needed a link cable so I could trade my Pokemon to you and then you can trade it back to me and then all of a sudden it evolves. Like... This is awesome. It's it's awesome that they're able to keep like the spirit of that alive in these newer games. And I miss that. I I want that back. It's very much the nostalgia factor for me. And up next, number two, we have Boktai. In Boktai, the cool real life feature isn't necessarily something that's hidden or they have to figure out. It's an essential part of the game. You have to charge up your battery and your energy in that game for your sun gun, you know, because you're a vampire hunter and you're shooting vampires. But you have to power that up with real UV radiation. The cartridge actually has a little UV sensor on it. So when you go outside, it picks up the sunlight, picks up the UV rays, and it converts that into the game and gives you energy, like on screen as your little light bar that you have. And and maybe this was Konami's way of getting gamers to go outside and play and not just be indoor kids. Who knows? What's really cool about this series is the fourth installment of the game was actually put out on the DS, and they couldn't put a light sensor on that cartridge, so instead, if you owned a Boktai game for Game Boy Advance, you could actually put the cartridge in the Game Boy Advance slot on the DS and use the sensor on that cartridge to power your weapons and stuff in the game that you're playing on the DS, which is a really cool idea, and this is back when Konami actually mattered and weren't scumbag pricks. And up next, number one, we have Metal Gear Solid. The Psycho Mantis boss battle in Metal Gear Solid has so many memorable fourth wall breaking moments and little real life tricks that actually affect the game. For example, when you are fighting Psycho Mantis, to show you his powers, he asks you to actually take your controller, place it down on the table, and watch him move it with his psychic powers. 
And if you have a controller that has the rumble weights, it actually shakes and moves across the table, which when I played that game when it came out, I remember losing my shit over that and thinking that was so cool and so awesome. But the point I really want to get to on this one is when you're trying to attack Psycho Mantis, he sees every single move coming because he's a psychic. He can read your mind. He knows what's going on. But after Campbell calls you on the codec, he tells you to take the controller out of port one and put it into port two, and that should confuse Psycho Mantis. And it does. Because you're doing that, he can't read your mind for some reason. And any shot that you take at him, he can't, you know, see coming and he can't deflect. And that's just a really cool trick. That's also just Hideo Kojima being a mastermind of his craft. There's also the part in the game where you need to call Meryl for the first time. The only way to get her codec frequency is to look on the back of like the game case. Like in real life, look on the back of the case and it was there on a screenshot. And you know, that sucked for little shit kids like me who lost that game case and didn't have any friends or the internet. So I was just kind of screwed. I don't, I don't even know how I figured that out, honestly. And those are five video game tricks unlocked by real world actions. Meet me down in the comments let me know which ones of these are your favorites or let me know which ones I may have missed. I want to hear from you guys about it. And make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We put out content like this every single day and the best way to get it is with a subscription. Also, make sure you like this video because that helps us out as well. Once again, guys, I'm Andrew the New Guy. Hopefully you guys enjoyed my company. You don't hate me too much and I'll see you next time on Game Ranks.